Hello, Ryan Flowers here, Whiskey 7 Radio Lima Foxtrot with mist.geek.com. And today I'm going to show you the modification I did to my BitX40, which is to replace the RF510 with the Mitsubishi RD15HVF1. And why would I want to do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is that some people say the IRF 510 is harder to getting hard to get and has been discontinued. I don't think it's the case. You can still get them. Uh, but nevertheless, some people you know want to replace it. Uh, the reason I did it is because I've modified my bit X40 to work on multiple bands. So uh, I wanted more than a, like one or two watts out on 20 meters. So I wanted to replace the IRF 510. I, it, was, it was my main suspect. I was wrong, by the way. Uh, that wasn't the problem, and I really don't remember what the fix was. However, I am now getting five watts out, so I'm, that's good enough for me. Um, the main problem in putting the uh, RD15HVF1 in is that it has a different pinout. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I get the RF510 and the HD15 H RD15HVF1. And the IRF 510's pinout is ground drain source, and the RD 15 HVF1 is ground source drain. By the way, this is the same thing. There's an, uh, an RDD or RD 16 HHF1, I think it is, it is another uh, chip that is common. Uh, I couldn't get that, so I got the RD 15 HVF1 that works just fine at uh, HF frequencies. So clearly, there's some fancy clip work that's got to be done there to. So what I did is you can see the source and the, the sources are really they're right next to each other. So what I did is I mounted the source in of the RD 15 HVF1 in the same PCB hole for the source for the IRF 510. And this is what that looks like. I apologize for the shakiness. So there's the RD 15 HVF1 and you can see it's offset by one pin and um, there's an empty hole there. There's actually a couple of empty holes. It's just the lighting is not very good. And the reason is because those holes were already gone <laughs> uh, from mishaps with uh, way too much current going through the IRF 510. I burned up a few of them, okay? Just full admission right there. So uh, what we've done here is instead of going gate drain source, we're going blank gate source drain. So uh, I went ahead and soldered in the source to the PCB, the one good remaining uh, via in the actual PCB itself. And then I soldered the drain directly to T7, which you can see there. So it's directly soldered and then the gate I soldered directly to uh, R150, which you can tell has been replaced with a standard uh, part rather than a surface mount part. Um, that was from a failed experiment. So um, what are the results? Well, the whole reason I did it was to get more power on 20 meters, and I think that worked. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the actual reason it worked, but I'm getting five watts out instead of one, so I'm happy. Um, this is what happens when you don't document your work real well. I was just running through a bunch of things and one of the things I did worked. Uh, the other thing is this thing is a whole bunch easier to tune up than the IRF 510. So um, on the right here you've got the R136 and then in the middle RV1. Those are the two. Uh, the RV1 controls the bias and R, uh, R136 controls the drive. And they've got to be fairly specifically set with the IRF 510. Uh, not so with the Mitsubishi part, at least not not uh, as of, from my experience. Once I tuned it up, um, uh, gave it some bias, and it just kind of worked. Um, it didn't draw the, a lot of more current the more bias I gave it, so it was a little bit more forgiving on that setting. And I'm able to drive it pretty hard, and it doesn't get too hot. Um, of course, I've got a you know pretty good heat sink on it for digital modes. But it works well, and uh, I think it's a you know an okay mod to do. I don't, I'm not going to say that you should do this mod, uh, because especially if you're just doing a 40 meters, you really don't need it. And even if you're doing 20, I think there's 
better ways to, I think there's a better way to fix that so that it'll get more, more output on 20. But, um, but it works for me. And if this one blows, I'll put another one in. They are a bit more expensive than the IRF 510. And I think that's why Farhan originally went with the IRF 510 was for cost. And, you know, this IRF 510 is a dollar. This one was $5. And at scale, that's a huge difference. You know, I mean, it's a $59 radio. An extra $4 would make it a $64 radio or a $63 radio. So that's a, a price point thing. Um, and I'm glad that he used the IRF 510. So anyhow, uh, that's this is my beat up and uh, modified and kind of repaired and hacked, hacked, re hacked back together and whatnot, BitX40. Hope that you have found the video useful, enjoyable. Uh, leave your questions, comments, concerns in the uh, comments below. Make sure you subscribe there. And uh, check out the blog, misc.geek.com, M-I-S-C-D-O-T-geek.com. Links in, in the, uh, it's down there. There's a link. All right, not on the board, in your browser. Just go down, yeah, right there. There you go, okay. 73 to you.